organic farming has been around since 1939. A guy named Lord Northburn first used the term in his book, Look to the Land, where he was trying to describe a more ecologically balanced, holistic approach to organic farming than using chemicals. Nowadays, the term organic is thrown around all over the place, but what does it really mean and how can you take small steps in your habits to get the most out of your organic shopping? Well, that's what we wanted to know. So we set out on a mission. We went around all over town trying to find organic and non-GMO produce. Well, maps said that there were places and shops selling organics everywhere. Well, it turns out it was harder to find actual organics than it seems like it should be. All right, first stop, NRH Farmer's Market. It's specifically targeted towards, or it's specifically marketed as a farmer's market. They say organic foods, um, produce, and meat, and a flower garden. So we're about to go in and see what we find. Yeah, like along here, I'm not well, seeing like it. We only consider organic produce because it has a, has a label because it's the need to certify it. Oh, okay. But and that's just what well, items for here, carrots here. But I also carry meat, cheese, eggs, and bread. It's organic, but all those are in free range as well. No hormones, all those year round. Uh, during this time of year, I'm getting like my zucchini squash, my okra. Uh, my pickles, my potatoes are all coming from the same farmer. Mm -hmm. uh, she, Melissa's, Melissa, Melissa, Melissa Fretwell Farms, owned for 15 years. She puts organic seeds in the ground, sprays they come up, and that's about all she does. She couldn't afford pesticides if she wanted to, but she also can't afford the certification colors of organic either. Look at that PLU code. You know the code that the cashier uses at the register to check you out? If it has a four digit code, that means it's grown conventionally with pesticides and other stuff. If it has a five digit code that starts with the number eight, it actually means that it's GMO, that's genetically modified. If it has a number nine and it's a five digit code, then it means it's organic. But turns out you probably won't ever see that number eight listed in the shops because it's a voluntary thing to do. The USDA, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, their national organic program is the organization that regulates laws on the creation, production, handling, and labeling of organic products. They oversee the practice of raising animals, soil quality, weed, and pest control. They prohibit most synthetic and petroleum-based pesticides. So in theory, buying organic should protect you from consuming toxic pesticides and other stuff you don't want in your bodies or your kids' bodies. But keep in mind that organics in its natural state is not meant to last for weeks and weeks. So if they're shipping from anywhere else in the country or even in the world, they have to put some stuff in there in order to keep it looking fresh and good for what arrives in your local store. When it comes to labels, there are a couple of common misconceptions, things that you need to be aware of. The non-GMO project label means that it is non-GMO. It's not genetically modified, but it can actually be uh, traditionally grown. However, on the other side, the certified organic label is really what you should be paying attention to because it means that it is non-GMO and in addition, it is not grown with any synthetic pesticides or neurotoxins or uh, sewage sludge, all of that stuff. And it's been grown on land that has been free from those synthetic pesticides and chemicals for three years or more. And in addition to that, it's been uh, that strict regulations in terms of the store owners, they have to keep the produce completely separate from traditionally grown products. Because more and more people are demanding to know where their food comes from, markets and shop owners are using terminology in their marketing to attract these people. So now we have to pay even closer attention to the marketing. Signs like all natural, homegrown, farm fresh, fresh produce, vegetarian fed. These signs are attractive, but they don't necessarily mean that the food is non-GMO, organic, or even locally grown. Spaghetti Ooh, that's, squash. That's spaghetti squash, is that organic? Uh, it is actually not. Oh yeah, no. One squash is really hard to source organically. Yeah. What about the corn, is that non-GMO corn? It's non-GMO. Organic, 
everything is non-GMO. Okay, wow. cool. Oh my gosh, you found non-GMO corn! I did. Wow! I got four ears. <laughs> it took months of trying to find a place that was really non-GMO, really organic. Um, they do have things that aren't local, but they specify that very clearly. Uh, it now, states where it's from. It, in this case, we are taking their word for it. If you buy this kind of food, generally you build a relationship with the place you get it from because it is a lot smaller. It's not a big, huge conglomerate. So you're not going to be dealing with people that are, you know, just in and out and don't care about what they do. So you'll actually build relationships with the people once you find a place where you can get good food. So in that aspect then it gets a little bit more credible and you get to know them then you get to know where your food's coming from and there most of these places are completely willing to give you the information on where uh, stuff comes from so what's that old saying knowledge is power so true so shop where you can ask questions and they'll actually be able to answer you educate your family and friends on these issues and topics so these are the small steps that you can take towards a more sustainable lifestyle. We'd love your tips and suggestions. Leave a comment below. We look forward to hearing from you. Bye.